Hello everyone, I have a brand new free update for the blueprint I gave away in the last video. In case you missed it, it allows you to spawn meshes along a spline, and it has a lot of other related options that you would need in this type of blueprint. In this update, we can now spawn things periodically along a spline, and with that comes a whole panel of options. In the options, you have the ability to periodically spawn blueprints instead of meshes along the spline, and when I say spawn them, I mean they can be individually edited once they're spawned in. Besides that, we have a couple of fixes under the hood, based off comments I saw from the last video. The new features are now infused with the previous blueprint and can be downloaded from the link in the description of this video. Let me drag in the new spline mesh blueprint and start with the new features. We have a new panel called Periodic Placement that allows you to periodically have meshes or blueprints placed along a spline. I'm going to add the default Unreal Engine cube as a static mesh, and we can see that it's being deformed along the spline to take the full volume of it. We can scroll back down to the Periodic Placement tab and check the variable Periodic Placement, and now the mesh is placed by default every 1000 centimeters. We can change that by setting the placement distance to something lower like 250, and now they appear a lot more frequently. I'm going to replace the mesh with this No Parking sign, and for the number of signs you can tell we really don't want anybody to park here, but they're probably going to anyway because we don't have the signs facing the right way. We need to rotate the meshes along the spline, which can be done using the rotate mesh variable. We need to rotate it along the z-axis 90 degrees. And just like that, it's facing the right way. We can also have the landscape slope influence the rotation of the meshes by checking the variable tilt with landscape. And now the signs are standing up straight from the hill they're on. The next option is to use blueprints instead of static meshes. I have constructed the top of the line street lamp blueprint that has the functionality to turn on or off. I'm going to use them as the blueprint, but before I spawn them in, I want to make the conditions a little more realistic. I'm going to have the spline follow the road like I showed in the previous video, and have them placed every 2000 centimeters. Now that that's done, we'll press spawn objects. The whole road is now covered with street lamps, but it looks kind of weird having the landscape tilt them. So I'm going to press destroy objects to get rid of the existing street lamps. Uncheck tilt with landscape and then respawn them in. That looks quite good. Let's get that in the time lapse. Very good. Now the last thing from this panel is the spawned actors list. And it just keeps track of all the actors that get spawned from this blueprint. This is necessary for it to know which actors to destroy. If you want some not to get destroyed, you can remove it from the list and then press destroy to wipe out the rest of them. A couple of last things to mention for this section is that once you spawn any object, they can be individually moved around and edited like a normal actor in your level. With that, they will show up in the outliner tab individually. Also, you can use the spawn objects button to spawn stack meshes if you leave the blueprint section blank. That's it for the Periodic Placement tab, I'm going to quickly cover some of the improvements from the last version. Starting off, the snapping to ground function actually snaps the spline to the ground now, instead of just the meshes. The meshes also snap to the ground individually now, and not just at the spline points. I have this railroad track, and I've put a cube in the middle of the tracks, forcing it to go above the cube. The start and end of the mesh gets snapped upward and it adapts quite well considering how much it needs to stretch to get above the cube that suddenly. Next I have a new variable called forward axis and that's there for anybody using the meshes that go forward on the y axis. You can tell which axis it is by seeing if the mesh you want to repeat is aligned with the red arrow, the x axis, or the green arrow, the y axis. If it is a y axis mesh, it will repeat the wrong way, and let me demonstrate that with these fences from Quixel Bridge. All the meshes on Quixel Bridge are x-axis aligned, so I believe this wouldn't be a problem, but if it was y-axis, it would repeat like this. And that's not good. It's proper to have spline meshes go forward on the x-axis, but this function is here just so that you don't have to go through the process of moving it to Blender, or another 3D object editor, and realigning it. And one more thing, if you have your mesh going along a road or spline and it's facing the wrong direction, like this stop and slow down sign, you can tell it to be on the opposite side of the road by switching the variable left side 
and then setting the distance from spline to be negative. Now you can see that says stop instead of slow. Alright, that's it for the new features. If you need a refresher on what any of these options do, you can hover over any of them and check the comment that it reads out. And if you like the road system in the background, I sell the pack on the Unreal Marketplace, which there will be a link for in the description of this video. I would also like to say thank you to those who bought it after watching the last video. It really helps me be able to develop blueprints like this to release for free without having to worry about monetizing everything. All funds raised from that are going into funding more development hours for these blueprints and our game development plans for the future. Thank you all again, until next time.